Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Special guest, Nike Hot Seat, makes them available to you and to me. <laughs> you recognize the face. Don't jump to conclusions. He's not coming back into wrestling anytime soon. Made his home at the University of Minnesota with a record of 120 and 20. A four-time All-American for Jay Robinson at 174 pounds. He graduated May with a business and marketing degree. And uh, I'm sure made his mother Jody happy. He joins us now. Does Logan Storley? Logan, it wasn't that long ago where you joined me on the show to make the announcement where you were gonna go to college. Do you remember? Yeah, you know I do. I was a senior in high school, and uh, you know time flies. And you know now I'm going on to the next adventure in my life. Today you're sitting in Las Vegas. Your girlfriend is in Las Vegas, and uh, your career in mixed martial arts has, uh, well, it's it's what we call plodding along in the right direction. You've had four uh, pro fights, all winning. Uh, you've won all of those uh, by TKO, uh, some tough cats as well. But Resurrection Fighting Alliance is a very good place for you, or so it seems. Can you talk about it? Yeah, you know, it's been going really well. Um, <clears throat> you know, I started off my career in August and uh, my first pro fight and started off with the TKO. And just, uh, you know, got, got comfortable. This last time, you know, my last two fights have knocked both of the guys down with a big right hand. And, you know, I know my wrestling's some of the best wrestling in MMA, um, especially being fresh out of college wrestling. And, uh, you know, so I'm comfortable. I'm just getting better and better um, every day, really, is what it is. So, you know, I'm excited to see what the future has in store for me. In mixed martial arts, a wrestler's always going to wrestle. That's part of his natural regimen of as far as practice goes so what do you do as far as focusing your time what do you need to get better at hand speed boxing uh jujitsu muay thai what is it you what is it you focus on or are there different aspects to each day um you know really it matters what kind of if i'm not in camp then obviously i'm going to work on my boxing because uh you know i've wrestled my whole life and so i want to keep that sharp but i need to work on my boxing and my combos and learning to get comfortable moving my head. Um, and jiu-jitsu I work on a little bit, but it's more of, uh, you know, I, I was scrambled a lot in college. Um, anyone who watched me knows that. And so jiu-jitsu really went well for me because I scramble a lot and continue to wrestle through positions. And so jiu-jitsu was really a good fit for me. So it's just learning little technical things with jiu-jitsu. But boxing has been my biggest uh where I put a lot of time into is just learning how to put everything together, my boxing into my wrestling, my wrestling into my jujitsu. So that's what uh, I spend a lot of my time on is my boxing. A lot of times it's that ebb and flow matches well, have high points, low points, and it's up to you to determine what, uh, what will work that night. You can watch all the film you want on a, on a competitor, but when a fight breaks down, you go to your strength, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So natural you know, I, progression. Yeah, you know, my first my first two fights, I took them down the first or shot, first five seconds of the fight, <laughs> you know. I probably could have st stood up a little further, you know, longer, but I just wanted to take it to the ground because I was comfortable. You know, I spent 18 years wrestling, and so, you know, getting down in a stance and shaking hands was natural to me, and so touching gloves and having my hands up was a little uncomfortable at first so um, these last two fights I've dropped both my guys with the right hand and it's getting more and more comfortable so I'm excited to you know to keep improving we're talking with Logan Storley a four-time All-American win at the University of Minnesota you follow in the heels of guys like Brock Lesnar who went from uh, the University of Minnesota into the world of uh uh, professional wrestling and then on to mixed martial arts and then back to professional wrestling guy seems to be happy wherever he is but um, you guys come from the same town webster south dakota population oh i don't know about 1925 um so i gotta ask have you have you two trained together have you talked to him about this or is it typical brock lesnar where he's just off on a jet somewhere doing what he does um, you know, <clears throat> I went out there my senior year of uh, high school and spent some time when he was training for one of his world uh, title fights. And so I got to train, 
not train with Brock, obviously he's a big dude, <laughs> but I got to be around. I got to do the strength conditioning. I got to do the, the workouts with guys, my size, you know, beside Brock, you know, so I got to go through only on Fridays and Saturdays. I, I was still in high school, so I didn't get to get to leave school, but, um, you know, I got to see what it was like, um, for probably two, three weeks. I'd go up there every weekend to drive up to Alexandria from Webster and, get to experience what the life of a UFC um, heavyweight champ was, what the training camp was like as an 18-year-old kid. So, um, you know, I'm, I only have four pro fights, but I've been around, um, you know, guys like Brock and other guys that he's brought in. Um, Cole Conrad? Cole, yeah, Cole Conrad was there. Um, and I just got to see a lot of things that maybe other people don't get to because of Brock. You know, I've got to experience mm-hmm. – cameras everywhere and um you know media and just being with brock for the couple weeks that i was it was you know very eye-opening to see what he has to go through didn't you guys have the same high school coach as well yep so that's kind of how it first happened um, when i went down there my freshman year of high school and i wrestled and just hung out and my high school coach went with me um john Sheely, because john coached brock and uh so he still stays in contact with both of us, Brock and me. So it's a, it's a good relationship. So, you know, he's a very good high school wrestling coach. All right. So you tell your high school coach, you tell your mom, Jody, you tell your sisters, Janessa and Jade, that you want to fight. And if my record is right, you had three amateur fights while in high school. Is that true? Yep. Once I was over 16, um, I was ready to, you know, I, I was a young kid and I just wanted to, want to do MMA and so they let me I yeah they let you well oh boy did they let you because you're pretty darn good I mean I think that was an outstanding decision did you think you'd fall in love with fighting um you know wrestling's always been my first love but I really enjoyed every time there was a pay-per-view during you know, college wrestling season, you know, it'd be that Saturday night and we'd probably <clears throat> get done wrestling Friday or whatever. And, you know, I watched, you know, since I've been probably eighth grade, freshman year of high school, I watched almost every single pay-per-view and you know, I've just been always very interested in the sport and especially the success that division one, II, division two, II, division three, you know, even guys who wrestle in high school were having, and I knew at a young age that, you know, watching some of these fights that, you know, I thought my wrestling was better as a high schooler than some of these guys, you know, professionals, you know, I knew how good my wrestling was. And, you know, I think a lot of college guys are starting to realize that, you know, that they can do very well for themselves in the sport of MMA because of the way that wrestlers train, you know, the four year grind that I went through at the university of Minnesota or any college wrestler, but if you go four years and, you know, to be at that top level, you know how hard it is to go to class, to wake up and lift and wrestle, make weight, and then do that for five months straight, take a little break, and then repeat that for four years. I mean, that's the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. And um, so it makes these MMA training camps seem not as bad. Right. Well, you've, so, been, you've, you've trained uh, in terms of wrestling, you've trained with some guys with names. C.B. Dalloway, Aaron Simpson, Ryan Bader, Ben Askren. I mean, the names go on. You obviously pick something up from each one of them, and I'm sure you've shared uh, what you you know your knowledge with them as well. But uh, uh, you, you seem to be welcome new faces to roll with, yeah? Yeah, you know, it's... It was great. Um, you know, I went up to Wisconsin right away. Um, I did a camp for Ben Askren last year, and so I spent some time um, with him down there. And, you know, you talk about the guy who's the king of scrambling, you know, and who's one of the best welterweights in the world, you know. I had to take that opportunity to train with Ben, and so I got to do that, and it was awesome. And I, I learned a lot from that guy. Um, you know, the he can get out of anything, and he can put you anywhere, and just the positioning and the balance. And so it was very, it was very good for me to experience that. And then uh, I went down to power MMA um, and spent my last few training camps there and, you know, got to work with awesome group of guys, um, mostly all wrestlers and uh, everyone just really understands each other. Cause we've all been through that same grind and, you know, it's just gone really well for me. Um, and it's nice to have your, 
your teammates, you know, also be wrestlers and they have your back. So it's been a great experience so far. Logan Starley, our guest in the Nike hot seat today, along with me, Scott Casper. Glad you're joining us. The former All-American currently walks around at a puffy 192. It must be uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> I, te I tease, I tease. He fights at 174, or 170, rather. Uh, fights at 170, so making that cut down to welterweight, is that hard? Uh, no, it's not too bad. Um, you know, right now. I've been out a little bit, um, so, you know, I'm a little bigger. I'm probably weighing 195, 196, but uh, when I do my eight-week training camp, um, you know, I probably start the training camp at 190, and then, you know, do the last. It slowly comes down, and then by the last uh, week, I do the last eight, nine pounds, and, you know, it's not too bad. It has been really it's been really good so far. Making weight hasn't been too bad, but uh, I can tell I'm getting a little bigger, um, just like in anything you know, I'm lifting more and getting stronger. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I continue to just uh, get, you know, get, I'm getting a little bigger. And so it's, it's getting a little tougher, but, you know, it's not, not too bad a cut compared to other guys cutting 15 pounds on the last day of weigh-ins. So I only have to cut 20 in the whole camp. So I'm not complaining. You're, you're fighting for a respected and solid organization, a Resurrection Fighting Alliance. Uh, it seems like they are matching you. Uh, with uh, equal talent, and uh, that's what I like. That's what I look for from fight organizations, too. They have a good matchmaker. Does the system work? Are you working enough? Well, right now you're on a bit of a timeout because of uh, your right hand. Can you show your right hand to the camera? Yeah. What happened? Little... Can you explain what happened? <clears throat> uh, my last fight, um, I hit my overhand right, and I tore, I tore it. Um, uh, on, the, on the outside of my hand. So I just had a little scope. I'll, I'll be out six weeks, six to eight weeks. And so it's a nice, I just did back to back training camps. Um, and I had to get it taken care of now because I don't want it to come up in, you know, a year or so and crack it all the way and then have to be out for six months. So, right. um, it's been, it's been, uh, you know, it's been nice to have a little break, but it's, it, it's tough having the cast. I can't sweat. So, um, you know, I'm, right now I'm just recovering and getting ready. I get the cast off today, actually. So, you know, I'm just getting ready to uh, get back into training slowly, running, working out, you know, doing those kind of things. And we'll see uh, what the RFA has in store for me next. So from RFA, the obvious choice, well, maybe for some, would either be, uh, well, I would think it would be the UFC, and your eyes would have to be on that golden prize that, big beautiful belt they strap around your waist uh, at least that's what they do to the champions is that your ultimate goal you know um either bellator or um the ufc um you know you can't rule out either you know bellator's starting to come a long ways from where they were and you know some guys are getting really good deals and so um you know i think it has to be about being the best in the world but also you know this is a business too um, you know, you have to make the right business decision because I uh, don't get to fight for the rest of my life. Um, so I have to make whatever, whatever makes the most sense business wise also, but really, you know, you know, you and me talked when we were in college, you know, uh, about winning that NCAA title and, you know, it didn't happen, came up short, um, a couple times in the semifinals. And so now this is the next, uh, next step, you know, the next goal is to get the gold and, and MMA. So whether it's in Bellator or the UFC, um, you know, that's what I want to do now. And that's why I think I really continued to my end of my MMA career. I think if I would have won an NCAA title or two NCAA titles, I don't know if I would have went on to fighting. So, um, you know, I, I have a new goal now and I'm motivated as ever to prove that, you know, um, you know, I'm going to be the best fighter in the world in my weight class and pound for pound. Um, you know, I've all these other wrestlers having success. Um, you know, I know how hard I work uh, during college, and uh, you know, I know how I work during my MMA camps, and even when I'm not in camp. So, really, I'm just looking forward to the future, and uh, you know, taking it slow and getting better each fight, and then uh, ultimately either getting the call from Bellator or the UFC. And Bellator is actively pursuing high-level wrestlers. So uh, we we interviewed Gerard Trice. Uh, about that very thing, and uh, it's amazing the the talent they've signed f 
from our world of wrestling into the world of mixed martial arts. And Scott Coker is looking at these guys as natural uh, athletes and uh, well-prepared. You can count on wrestlers. Seldom do they back out of a fight for whatever reasons. Wrestlers would normally uh, be that guy that will man up and, and take that fight no matter what. And I really like that. I, I happen to agree. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, you and I have been buds for a while. A uh, big shout out to your mom, Jody, too. Uh, the girls, the girlfriend, uh, she's supportive, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know, her, her brother is um, my assistant manager, and uh, so that's how I met her. And, you know, it's, it's good right now. You know, things are going really well, and I got a good support system, you know, family and friends. And, you know, I can't complain right now. And, uh, you know, just getting better, and hopefully, uh, you know, with all that support, you know, I'll be in the UFC or Bellator here real soon. There's your update. The young man from Webster. That's what I'm talking about. Webster, South Dakota. Uh, it seems that they're growing them pretty strong, pretty fast, pretty pretty big up there. And uh, I know I know Brock Lesnar would agree with that estimation as well. Logan, it's always good to talk to you, man. Best of luck as you continue your career in Resurrection Fighting Alliance. And uh, I hope the hand heals fully and uh, you're able to uh, get a good and positive camp in for your next uh, next event. Is there a date yet? Do we have a date to look for for your next fight? Um, I'm thinking September or um, October, September. but uh, nothing confirmed. So. All right. Well, keep us posted, bud, will you? All right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. He's been a guest in our Nike hot seat is uh, Logan Storley, the four-time All-American at 174 pounds for the University of Minnesota. He'll have the burden for the rest of his life of carrying around a 120 and 20 record while wrestling for the Gophers. Quite a burden indeed. Nice job. He graduated just May with a degree in business marketing. And I got to tell you, you could uh, be in the fight business a long time. If you don't have that, you won't have much to show for it. Business marketing, that's a great degree to have. Make sure uh, all the uh, T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Logan, thanks for the time. All right, thanks for having me. Tell your mom we said hi too, will you? I will do. For all of us at Takedown Media, I'm Scott Casper. I appreciate you watching. 